So I'd like to talk about uh, Elkhart lawyer by the name of Martin McClowski. And I don't want to make this video, but I feel that I have to because of my experience in uh, having hired him to deal with my divorce issues. Now he could say that this is just sour grapes. This is not sour grapes. I've had quite a few months to deal with this and um, he could also say that uh, that I settled which I did but you know I felt that I had no choice at a point in time where my money was just being wasted and I didn't have money to hire another lawyer and he could also argue that I haven't paid his bill yet which I haven't, haven't paid his what he calls a bill and I'll elaborate on that my ex-wife left me so I hired this guy Martin McClowski because uh, my ex had hired the person that I wanted to hire said it was a good lawyer but uh, she had already hired him and so uh, and there wasn't it, the town where she was filing divorce was small there wasn't a huge choice of lawyers so I had to go into the neighboring county of Elkhart to find another lawyer. And I chose Elkhart because I'm in Elkhart quite a bit. I couldn't go into Michigan obviously because they can't practice in Indiana. And I could have, but going to a county further over uh, seemed didn't seem plausible either because I would have to really travel just go see him. And I'm in Elkhart a bit. You know, an El a trip to Elkhart is a fairly standard, regular trip for me. So Elkhart was my choice, and uh, one of the reasons I hired uh, Martin McClowski, first off, the man seems confident when you're, when you're talking to him. You know, face to face, uh, the guy seems to have confidence and seems to build confidence when you're dealing with him person to person. However, that confidence dwindled greatly when I saw him in action, or should I say in action. The guy does not really seem to care, doesn't seem to be focused on what your needs are. Let me give you a little example of the nature of man. If man had everything handed to him, he would never work. This, this man is just naturally lazy. You know, we have people on welfare that attribute to that fact. You know, I don't want to get a job. I'm collecting welfare. And so Martin McCloskey doesn't have to win to make money. He just has to build up enough confidence for you to hire him and make an initial payment of uh, $2,000 or whatever it is he's currently charging. In retrospect, you know, if, if you were to hire a guy, uh, say you had a factory, and, you know, the guy expects to show up and work and you give him a paycheck. But if he starts not working and you don't catch it, you're going to keep giving him a paycheck. And if you just let it go, even if you know he's not working, he just shows up and you keep giving a paycheck, he's going to show up and not work and collect a paycheck. Well, so... In this uh, respect, this is what Martin Makowski does. He builds some confidence, and then you give him money, and then he's done. See, he doesn't have to win a case to get money. You just have to hire him. Uh, when I hired him, uh, one thing that caught my attention was he called me after hours. It's like, oh, well, this guy's going to work, you know, way past 5 o'clock. To get the job done, the, you know, that impressed me. But little did I know that he just had his number directly connected to his own personal cell phone. Therefore, whenever he got a message, you know, he, even if he was home, he could call you right back. So, you know, I figured this was he was, you know, who wouldn't have an office phone? Well, he doesn't have an office phone connected right directly to his own personal cell phone. So he could take a call at midnight if he wanted to. You know, like, and in addition to that, you know, talking to the man, I always thought 
that he had some sort of rabbit up his sleeve that you know he was going to pull out at the last second. Aha! Ta-da! No, that didn't happen either. So to uh, elaborate more on what I'm talking about, he didn't have to file anything in the beginning because my ex had already filed for divorce. Uh, my ex had done several things highly questionable by people of standard mentality. You know, she tried to come in while I was at work and take the child and take whatever she wanted. But I happened to have the day off, so she had to, you know, lie her way through it. And then she ended up, um, she ended up coaching our daughter on what to say. And if you're watching this video, I have videos on this channel. You can look this up. It's it's in there. Uh, you can look it up. And my daughter says for herself that she was being coached on telling the police officers that she wanted to go with her mom. And because she said that to the police officers, I had to let her go with her mother. So that was never used in court. And uh, when it came to a, a temporary order, I was a bit confused on the paperwork at first. It said I had, the, when I first received the paperwork, it said I had um, 30 or 60, I think it was 60 days to respond, possibly 90, I think it was 60 to respond and that was on the first page and one of the things that built confidence was uh, was what he was saying about this paperwork you know, on the second page it said I had to appear in court you know like two days later well I didn't have an attorney and I didn't see that part I figured I had so the first part of the temporary order was granted to her she wasn't granted a whole lot she was granted uh, the rights to the child, parental rights to the child. Um, she was granted a minimum of child support because they had no numbers on what I was bringing in. So they just set it to the minimum. And they only granted uh, me uh, weekend visitations and I think I, I can't even get my paperwork back from this guy to verify this, but I think I was supposed to have Wednesday visits I didn't get those from my ex. No holiday visits, no nothing. And if you also look in the videos that my wife, my ex-wife, was never around. She was always out partying. And so the child was always with me, you know. She'd come home from work, she'd shower, she'd get dolled up, back out the door. And she wouldn't go up. You know, this was just a place to crash for her. She'd come home, go to sleep, wake up, go to work, come home, shower, throw on the war paint, out the door she went. And it wasn't until after the divorce started that I found out that she was sleeping around with everybody. And this you can verify again on videos that I have on here. Uh, so the trying to get back to the main point. The uh, first bit of confidence that confidence building that uh, Mikowski did was he was looking at the paperwork and going, "Oh, well, this is written very strangely." I'm like, "Oh, really? You know, we, we, we've got them on something because the paperwork isn't right." Well, I, I think that was just talk because that was never in question in court. Okay, it was brought up talking face to face. Oh, confidence builder. All oh, this paperwork looks like crap. Not those exact words, but pretty much to the effect. That was another reason for hiring Mikowski. But when it came to actual getting stuff done, no. He dropped the ball on many occasions. A very prime example. First thing I asked him on day one, well the last thing I asked him, are you going to charge me or time traveled from one county to the next. This, you know, this is a great concern of mine because if he's going to charge me just for driving, you know, it's going to cost me a whole ton of extra money. And he assured me, he assured me, this is an exact quote, that I'm fair with my client's time. Okay. 
so you're not going to charge me. And so you know, the first court hearing, he got around this by saying that, well, you know what, I can, uh, I can just do this by phone. So the first hearing that I was actually at, I'm by myself. I'm sitting by myself in the courtroom. Oh, my lawyer's there, but he's on a telephone. He's over there sitting next to the judge on the telephone. The judge has the telephone. I don't have the telephone. So I can't go, oh, hey, what about this? You know, I can't whisper in his ear. You know, can't ask him things. Can't remind him of things. Nothing. And, uh, you know, the, the meeting was only 10 minutes long. And as soon as they thought they were over, the phone was hung up. And I was, um, Your Honor, I'd like to ask my lawyer about something. Well, we can't because I just hung up the line. Oh, great. So, in uh, doing this little sidestep here, you know, of a promise that he made, you know, I felt uh, cheated, you know. I couldn't confer with my lawyer. You know, he should have been sitting next to me. No, I just call it in. And, you know, I couldn't ask him little details before or after. Um, only, only during the case could I say anything that my lawyer heard. So I was cheated out of, you know, some good uh, conversation time with McCluskey. Just, just in 10 minutes. Well, the next ball he dropped was uh, they were, I kept complaining that that I should be getting more time with my daughter. I mean, according to any guideline, parental guideline, the non-custodial parent is granted you know, like holidays and birthdays and stuff like that. I was seeing none of that. And that really hurt me. That I was the one always spent time with my daughter we'd go do lots of things now I'm just cut off you're down to uh, four days out of an entire month and uh, there was one thing that in addition they were trying to set up they were trying to set up uh, a new temporary order one of the first things that I was uh, had an issue with was my ex just picked up, left, took the child, moved to parts unknown. I didn't know where my child was. I didn't know where my child was going to school. I didn't know who she was living with. Um, I wasn't getting report cards because she had to go to another school. Didn't know where she was going to school. And my lawyer from day one, McCloskey, day one, oh, these are rights that you are supposed to be having day one. Great. That's you know that's another point on my side. First the paperwork's wrong, and now you know my ex is already uh, denying me stuff that I should be having. This is all on my side. And in the uh, the new temporary order, she calls me and. Um, says that uh, you know well, I need you to come over uh, we need to do some you know you need to do some stuff so I go over and he's got this paperwork for me so we uh, talked to her lawyer and you know here's a new temporary order and I'm you know thinking okay this is all official because it's being handled by lawyers and I'm signing the paperwork and the paperwork saying that I'm gonna start paying more child support uh, holidays are going to be included. I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's a fair trade. And a couple other things that I don't remember. And I don't have the paperwork because he's never given it to me. And I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of saying, wait a minute. What about my stuff? He's like, what stuff? My rights that I'm supposed to be having from day one. I don't know where my daughter is. Don't know where she's going to school. Don't know uh, who she's living with. All this other stuff. So, oh, yeah, yeah, well, he grabs a pen. He starts writing on this official document. 
oh, we're, we're, we're here, we'll include this, and we'll write this down on here, and we'll write this down here, okay, well, we got all this, okay, we got all this added on. He uh, sends it to her lawyer, and he's like, well, her lawyer's like, we can't work with this, you, we, we can't have him sign something, and then you write on it afterwards, and so they were trying to work something out, and then, hey, you know what, I never heard anything more about it. I thought this stuff was being taken care of. No one told me differently. Okay, it's taken. Okay, we're going to do this and get you taken care of. So I assumed it was being taken care of. The next court hearing, we're talking about this, and you know, this is like months later. Come to find out, my lawyer had forgotten about it. Either forgot about it or was sitting on it on purpose. But, you know, the, the lawyers are talking back and forth. Oh, this thing and this thing. Oh, well, I sent it back to you. He looks through his paperwork. Oh, here it is. I'm like, really? So, you know, he, he sat on paperwork, either on purpose or accident, you know, just because he forgot. And this was a, you know, but, you know, talking with him, he still had, was, you know, I'm, I'm confident. I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I need to do. So, on this so-called lawyer's uh, second show at court, he didn't know why he was there. He, he had to ask me why he was there. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? I'm like, I want my daughter. This is a divorce hearing. I want custody of my daughter. Considering the guy charged me a half hour for driving, you think he might have taken two minutes to look over the file just a little bit? No. Why am I here? What do you want from me? This is the kind of service that you can expect from this guy. Okay? There was just another delay. Another delay. Talking about having uh, somebody else come in that I would get charged for to review the mother and the father. That's a different, that, that's a disappointment too, but that's another story. We'll get into a little bit about it, but he was there maybe 10 minutes. It was probably, we'll say, for, for argument's sake, he, we'll say he was uh, actually in the courthouse for 20 minutes. But I got charged an hour of driving. Okay, half hour there, half hour back. And, uh, again, he said he wasn't going to do this. I'm fair with my client's time. Fair, right. Fair that you said you wouldn't charge me for driving. Fair that you didn't even bother to look at the case before you were expected to go to work. Fair that you didn't know why you were there. So, disappointments all around. And then again and again, you know, the, the next two court hearings, he, he again charged me for time traveling there and traveling back. You know, he only the only time he didn't charge me for travel time was for when he got away with it and phoned in. So... One way or another, this guy's going to shaft you. I guess I could skip ahead to the, the review. Oh yeah, the, this review that I had to hire. A guardian ad litem. Object to this. Okay? Object to this fully. I have, you know, like an inch of paperwork. Papers, pictures, documents. Of the crap that my wife was doing to me and to our child. 
I had a hard drive full of stuff because I recorded everything that I could. As you see, I've had cameras. I have lots of cameras. I'm on YouTube. I have cameras all over the place. I have cameras in the shapes of pens and lighters and even flash drives. So I could prove that my wife was never here. And the lady across the street gave me some written documentation. Mother's never here. And I had to pay $300 for this lady to come in and uh, evaluate everything. She, she hardly looked at anything. Every time I mentioned something, she reversed it. Like, oh, no, no, it's your fault. What? Or you can't prove that. Or, you know, and even when I could prove something, she would minimalize it. Try to think of an example. There's this one boyfriend that she was seeing, and she blackmailed him. Well, you can't prove that. I could prove that she was getting money from him. I talked to the guy. I have personal, you know, she didn't, she didn't even look at any of my stuff. She looked at some of the pictures of her party and then dismissed them. Showed her a picture of Angel being denied food. All right, she had three bites of a piece of day-old chicken, cold, with some sticky rice. She took three bites of the whole thing. She, uh, the, her mother made herself a fresh beef patty and some vegetables for herself. And then she, you know, gave me some, here, you take some hamburger, make a hamburger patty. I figured she had fed Angel. No, I was wrong. If I had known Angel hadn't eaten, I would have fed her myself. Angel was crying, and this is, this is in the, in the cloud. You can go look for it yourself. She's crying. She hasn't eaten but three bites. And then she's called to bed. All right. And then there were also maggots in the pan. In a pan that she was cooking next to. There was glass in Angel's bedroom. She broke a window. My ex-wife broke a window. Didn't clean up the glass. I replaced the glass. Took the frame out. Took it into town. Had the, had the glass replaced in the frame, put the frame back in, and by that time she still hadn't had the glass. I finally had to clean the glass up after my, I saw my daughter playing with a friend in her room. And that's on the, that's on the cloud. It's on the internet. You can look that up. All this woman cared about was uh, that my genitalia. And that was it. Oh, well, see... Angel's a female, and her mother's a female, and Angel's going to be going into puberty, and we think it's a good idea that a female be with a female. You know, despite all this other crap that she's never around, uh, neglects her, and all this other crap. Oh, well, you know, like I couldn't take care of it. Angel had um, pinworms crawling out of her butt, literally crawling out of her butt. And the first time she had this, her mother and a friend gave her some vaginal itching cream for it. That doesn't work. Second time she had this, she was oh, my butt itches, my butt itches. And, you know, I didn't want to, like, invade my daughter's privacy, you know, a personal space, you know. I didn't want to be uh, making my daughter expose herself, let me put it that way. To her father, but you know, being a medical emergency, I was like, "Okay, let me have a quick look." As soon as I saw what was going on, I had her in to see the doctor. And all this, all this social worker, why are you looking at your daughter's butt? Because I'm the one taking care of it. So. This lady who charged me three hundred dollars for supposedly three hours of six hours of service, three and three, three for me, three for my ex, only was here half hour. Sent me another bill for eighteen dollars. I don't know what for. And didn't you know? Didn't uh, uh, pay no never mind actual facts. She already had her mind made up. So she had her ruling, and I waited a couple weeks. She didn't send me a copy of the, the ruling, which she said she was going to do. 
she instead sent it just sent a copy to my lawyer yes the idiot and my lawyer sat on this paperwork for at least two weeks and like two days maybe one day one or two days before the final court hearing I'm like getting anxious I want to know what's going on so I sent him an email I said did we get a response back from the uh, guardian ad litem oh yes and uh, she found in favor of your wife so then like I asked the guardian ad litem was like um, uh, when did this when did you send the, the thing oh two weeks ago okay I had two weeks to deal to work around the fact come up with a case involving this guardian ad litem's obvious bias but my lawyer chose to sit on this paperwork oh yeah, oh yeah. by the way you lose oh thanks for telling me in advance and then when I told him well we can still make my wife lie in court because she will she'll lie about everything and then you could easily you know he didn't listen to it all he cares about was the easiest uh, way from point A to point B point A being me hiring him and giving him money and point B being the case is over and he can go on with the next one and then he even lost a case that was unlosable because my ex didn't even show up she, the final hearing is here and my wife is a no-show so what do they let her do they let her slide they let her slide well well we're gonna delay the case we're either gonna delay the case or we're gonna settle this right now in your ex-wife's lawyer office which was across the street oh yeah and then being told oh yeah by the way you owe me another uh, seventeen hundred dollars or whatever finding out that I was traveling time and I'm like what is this like at this point I knew it was a losing case so I reluctantly said all right all right let's just split everything down the middle as best we can as far as custody goes so I lost physical custody of my daughter we have joint custody but not during school time because my ex moved into the next county over and because you know I'm only 15 minutes from work I only pay three hundred dollars for rent I'm not moving I'm not moving into a bigger expensive place farther away where I have to use more gas all right this is my place I bought it I've been here for 10 years I'm staying but this is the kind of crap that you have to deal with with Martin McCloskey this so-called lawyer he is a scammer he is a scum lord of the lawyer community all right a, a scum lord this person has got an apartment or a house for rent um, you give him the money and you never see him again until it's time for rent right I got cockroaches or a water pipe burst or something and you'll never find him as soon as rents do boom he's there okay that's what this guy is he is the scum lord of the lawyer community don't hire him don't waste your money on him I was further ahead when I had no lawyer and I didn't even show up to court because her lawyer day one I misread the paperwork thought I had 30 60 whatever days no I had like three days so I missed the first part of the trial the, the lawyer the her lawyer was demanding everything but the kitchen sink and even the even though I wasn't there the judge said no this is ridiculous you're not getting this you're not getting this and you're not getting this we will give her child support a minimum amount of child support to take care of the daughter till we figure this out but you are being denied 
90% of everything that you are asked for. So even without a lawyer, even without me showing up there, I was doing better than when Martin McCloskey was representing me. And that's how bad this guy is. Oh yeah, I also want to touch base on something else. <clears throat> that as long as he's been in service, obviously all the other lawyers know how uh, good he isn't. And therefore, the, if the other lawyers you know, are aware, which obviously they've dealt with this guy more than once, they know they can railroad right over this guy and his client. So that's another thing. You know, if, if he's not going to, if McCoskey isn't going to do anything for you, and the other lawyers have dealt with McCoskey, which the, uh, oh yeah, that reminds me also, in the, uh, in the uh, instance where he, where he asked me, um, what am I here for? He also stated, I've never won against this guy being my ex-wife's attorney and I'm like oh great well maybe you should do something different to get different results I mean if I would have known then why well, I don't know I would have fired him I would have fired him right in front of the judge and uh, there's another thing that I want to talk about and that's his reviews if you look on Google and if you look on Yelp you'll see mixed reviews now these reviews are getting more and more every day as I, I check them and there's been um, there wasn't the fight that there is now you look at this and there's a bit of a struggle going on but when I first looked up I mean I looked up some Google reviews and all oh, this good, uh, Marty's good Marty's good and then as I started questioning uh, Marty I went back and I looked some of these guys up. I mean, you can go look them up. Right there is the name on the screen. You can go look them up on Facebook. So I looked one of these guys up on Facebook that gave a, good, a positive review. Five stars. Marty's a great guy. Pleasure working with him. Highly recommend it. Look this guy up on Facebook. Send him a message. Uh, let me ask you about you hiring... Marty McCloskey and he responded back oh no he hired me I'm like what so this guy gave a positive review on Martin McCloskey and he never hired him as an attorney turns out this guy is part of an advertising business ah, go figure you hire an advertising business, and the advertising business gives you a positive review. Hmm. I've recently seen a, a mechanics video about bad mechanics, and you know, in spare time, they have their guys putting out positive reviews. So if there's warnings about a guy being a bad mechanic on the internet, you pay heed to that. But on the other hand, if there's really good praises of them, be very leery. I know a guy down the street. He had his own mechanics when they weren't busy, typing in great reviews at the shop, how great they were, to sucker people to come in. They just made them all up themselves. And when my case was done with, I looked up these reviews again, and poof, like magic, all at the same time, some new reviews popped up. And these weren't just ordinary reviews, you know, oh, Marty's a great guy. These were like well-written advertisements that you might hear on the radio. Now here's one. And this, these all came out at about the same time. Martin McCloskey was amazing to work with. He was honest and helpful. He gave the case his all and told me exactly what I needed to do to win. Even if all I needed to do was shut up, listen, and let him do his job. I never got any service like that. And we did. Any low ratings on here are from people that either lost to him or that weren't willing to do what it took to win. I had a case this thick, alright? All I had to do was present it to the judge. That never happened. 
judge never saw anything of that I had. Trust me when I say this man is amazing, and I hope you not only call him for his awesome services, but also vote Martin Bukowski for prosecutor. Please give me a break. If that wasn't written by somebody else, um, then I'm Farrah Fawcett. And there are plenty of bad reviews here. He doesn't even deserve one star. This man is severely unprofessional. These reviews, these positive reviews, these new ones like this, like four or three or four of them popped up all at once. All at the exact same time. Amazing, isn't it? So when it comes to reviews on Martin McCloskey, question them. If he, you know, is only good half of the time, why would you take the chance that you're going to be the half of the time that sucks? So save your money. Find anybody else.